Back in the late 1990s, JPS had developed uh, our first line of radio interoperability products. That was the AC-1000. What we saw was that people were embracing the product and finding lots of applications for it. But in some cases, they were linking radios back through leased lines. And a number of people said to us that we have these IP networks, we're paying for the, the network, we'd like to be able to route radio traffic over them as well. Around 2000, we developed a product called the NXU2, a product that would take the audio for receive, the audio for transmit, as well as the squelch line, multiplex all of that into a single IP stream and send it over the network and recover it at the other end. And that turned out to be a very good implementation for radio-specific applications. Our ROIT protocol is much more efficient and much easier to configure for radio links than SIP is. And when we looked at those protocols, we, we found that they did not perform as well on a, on a poor network. That is, a network with a lot of latency and, and also with a lot of jitter. And so from the beginning, we built in fail-safes and we built in features that would allow us to work well on a, on a network that might not be considered telecom quality. What we wanted was a protocol that would be easy for a customer to implement in perhaps in their product. Maybe it's a dispatch console. Maybe it's some push to talk over cellular application. Whatever the application is, we created a protocol that is extremely simple to implement. Implementation is simple, but also configuration is extremely simple. There's not a lot of things to set. There's not a lot of things to configure. You set the IP address, you set the voice compression that you want, and it's ready to go. Back in 2000, when I developed the uh, ROIP and, and, and was testing it, I had to pick a port. There wasn't a, a standard for that. And so 1221 just happens to be my daughter's birthday. And for the testing and, and prototyping that I did, I picked port 1221, and then I guess it just kind of stuck. Moving forward, we will have ROIP in every product that we make. The, uh, the new Z-Series products uh, support ROIP. A number of our partners in the uh, industry have implemented ROIP in their products, and uh, we, we foresee ROIP being in pretty much everything we do for, com for backward compatibility and because it's, it's stood the test of time. It's a good protocol. ROIP can be expanded. We have already done some work to allow uh, radio IDs to be transmitted over the ROIP link so that could be used in a dispatch or, or console application. And then we have uh, some upgrades planned to ROIP for other applications that will provide uh, more metadata to be used in applications that we currently don't support with ROID. We see a need for supporting secure networks and also for the support of encrypted audio in our products. And so uh, moving ahead, we will have support for those things for the customers that need it. And uh, that's something that uh, I mentioned the uh, expansion of our existing protocols to upgrade the, to new features and those are some of the features that will be supported.